I think our guys kind of answered, you know, when we when we make threes and and share the ball. Um, you know, we're, we're as long as we keep defending. I thought our defense was great in the second half, as as good as we have played defensively in the second half. And you know, we've kind of been waiting for an offensive um, explosion. I think in college basketball right now, we've out of the three biggest halves in college basketball, we we've we've had two of the three biggest halves and and. Um, when we play like that offensively, we're really good, and I, you know, hopefully this can be a building block. I thought we played with great pace tonight, sharing the ball. I mean, just to 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 score a hundred points and only have seven assists. I mean, uh, only have seven turnovers, playing at the pace that we're playing at. Um, you know, our guys doing a great job of taking care of the basketball and 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 doing what we want. And I thought we were really active defensively as well. Um, so fire away. How good does it feel to just see the offense kind of come alive and hit some shots and you know play like you're capable of playing on that side of the ball to complement the defense? Yeah, I mean it's, it was you know it was on autopilot. I mean I could have gone out in, in the student section and put on a pink shirt and had fun because you know when the guys are playing like that, you know they don't really need us um, defensively. Again, I thought they were so connected and so dialed in. Colorado State can really score the ball. They got a lot of shooters and. Um, and they shot the ball well. I mean, they go nine of twenty from three. Um, it wasn't like they didn't, you know, hit three balls. And and we got to clean that up and defend the three point line a little bit better. But um, you know, I thought the scoring in the paint was, you know, we scored in the paint, and, and then we did a pretty good job getting to the foul line, and then we made threes. And that's the formula that, you know, NBA people will tell you is is the way to win basketball games. And and um, tonight I thought the guys really executed it. And 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 we, you know, when we get out and get 10, 11 steals uh, in transition, um, you know, and I think we had 30 whatever points off turnovers. I mean, we're we're pretty good. What changed in the second half? Was there something that you honed in on at halftime that you wanted to change uh, coming out of halftime? I mean, Jeff, it's like every night. Uh, with second halves, I mean, there's not, you know, there's, I, it's kind of, I, I wish I could explain it and, and, but we're just, we're a really good second half team and it's, it's, you know, it's been going on for, you know, kind of inexplainable. I mean, we, 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 we made some adjust with the, you know, their shuffle cut hurt us early in the game, getting the ball to Nico Carbaccio and we had to make a slight adjustment on that, but we've, you know, we felt like we wanted to pick up defensively a little bit more full court and, um, I think at halftime, we, when the ball touched the paint on our threes, we were like at 67% and we were like at 19% when it didn't. And so that we made a conscious effort to kind of go inside. And, um, you know, our rotation was a little bit, I thought the first half, you know, we started a different lineup and without Corey Henson, I thought there was a little bit of adjustment. And then in the second half, I thought there was a little more flow. Even for me, it was different. You know, we had lineups out there that we haven't had in the past. Um, so I think maybe that, you know, but I'd love to tell you guys whatever formula it is in the second half, but it's just who we are, I guess. That's 67%, 90% is that for the season when the ball touches inside? It's pretty close for the season, but that was tonight at halftime. Do you feel like you guys shot the three better because the shots were better selected? Yeah, I think when we come down and play outside the three-point line and take a three, um, you know, that's that's not what we want. We want either a dribble drive into the teeth of the defense and then a spit out or a spray out, um, you know, and then, you know, I'll tell them that and then they'll say, Coach, we're rolling, you know. Caleb felt like he was really cooking and kind of wanted me to shut up. I noticed Jordan Brown got the assignment on, on Nico quite a bit. I mean, you know, especially for 21 minutes and all that, but was is that – expected was that what you wanted to happen well i mean we you know jordan it was either jordan or trey so it was probably whatever trey porter played 21 and jb played 21 so for 30 seconds somebody was on another guy but yeah for for the most part um you know we wanted both those guys to throw two different bodies at at carvaccio and try to wear him down a little bit um you know is, is some of the things that we discussed earlier in the week I mean, after the game, uh, just having the fans kind of celebrate with you, seeing a pink out, raising $23,000 for cancer research. I mean, what does it feel like to have that experience based on what the crowds were like when you got here four years ago? 
I mean, the, when I pulled up tonight, the student section was awesome. I thought it was, you know, because I usually go up. I went up tonight um, before the game at about the 6.30 mark before they opened the doors for them. And it was our largest at that particular stage of, a, you know, an hour and a half before the game. That's the largest. And I go up there every night um, and shake their hands and thank them for coming. Um, but, you, you know, the pink out, really, really, really important to my wife. She spent a lot of time along with, with Holly and Kim and, and, and administration putting this thing together. It was not easy. It's the first time we've done it. You know, when we walked out and saw all the pink, I mean, I thought it was a, a special night. And then to be able to raise money like we did, um, you know, I mean, our family wants to be a big part of this community. And um, we dive in with two feet and try to do everything we can. And, and um, you know, I'm glad that uh, it was such a success because, like I said, my wife spent a ton of time you know, trying to pull the thing off and help get sponsors and stuff. How much did the last couple games motivate the team as far as shooting the threes and being crisper and more focused? And, you know, the things that you said the last game about shooting less threes, did that just kind of wake everybody up? I don't know, Joe. I mean, I think it's the first time that I've done that since I've been here, so I kind of wanted to get under their skin a little bit and piss them off a little bit. Um, they, you know, they know, they read and, then I tell them what I said, and um, you know, so that's why, you know, they were having a good time the night when they started knocking them down, and they were pointing at me and laughing, and so. I mean, I just think like the lid fell off tonight. You know, I think that, I mean, look, Caleb played the way he did all last year and hit big shot after big shot, and and you know, tonight. It opened up, and, and, you know, the guy that's really, really spent a ton of time shooting the three on his own is Jordan Caroline. I mean, he, he heard that that was something that he had to improve on, and he, uh, you know, he, 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 he does it. I mean, he's shooting at all hours of the night, and, you know, today before shoot-around, he was sitting on the bench, and I asked him what he was doing, why he wasn't shooting, and he laughed and said, Coach, I've been here an hour and a half. Like, what, what do you want me to do? I'm waiting until we start. So... You know, he's. I mean, I've been really impressed with his shot selection and what he's done from three. When you guys are shooting the threes like that. You guys feel like you can beat anybody. I mean, yeah, as good as any team in the country. Yeah, when we make threes like that. Yep. Um, it hadn't happened often this year, but um, you know that's kind of how we were last year towards the end of the year and in the NCAA tournament. Um, and yeah, I think when we shoot the ball like that. We're because we are a really, really good defensive team. Um, you know, we're not always great. I didn't think we were very good in the first half defensively, but over the course of a game, you know, we're we're a really, really good defensive team. And so, when, if we can if we can continue to tinker and get better, we've we've spent a lot of time on zone offense, a lot, and we've added, I would say, probably. 12 to 13 new plays over the last 10 days. And I, you know, I, I went back and searched, you know, the Spanish national team, Argentine national team, um, people that have played against them of late, uh, trying to get scouting reports. Um, we've been, we watch a lot of the Dallas Mavericks. Coach Carlisle does a good job when zones are played against the Mavericks. Um, and then we got some of the Timberwolves stuff that Coach Thibodeau used. So, we have been, as a staff, um, trying to do everything we can from a zone offensive standpoint. When Trey Porter gets going, how much of a boost does he give you? I mean, I think it's three straight games with double figures now. So just what does he bring to the table? He brings a lot, Jeff, because he's, like, he's, uh, he's an emotional guy. And, so, and he makes momentum swinging plays, whether it's a dunk or a block. Um, and, and he's... You know, when he catches it one on one, he's he's virtually unstoppable because he's got great length, and he usually draws fouls or draws contact because he's got such a quick move to the rim. Um, you know, he gives us just a whole different dimension from what we had in the past three years, and so we're trying to make an effort to really pound the ball into him. We wanted to, to get the ball inside a little bit more to Thurman when he got in, and and obviously Caroline's good good in the post as well, and. And, and Jordan Brown, but we, you know, when, when TP plays like that, we're, you know, because we got shooters and perimeter guys who can put the ball in the deck, so um, he's, a, he's a huge piece to what we do. You put Thurman back in the lineup, Henson's sick, first of all. Yeah, Corey, uh, 
<laughs> you know, he met with the doctors. They tested him. It wasn't whatever. I don't know anything about flu viruses or strains or whatever the heck they're called. But he tested not for that. And then so I called him and I said, where are you? And he said, I'm in the locker room. I've been there for the last three hours. And I said, well, that, <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense because everybody's about to come in there, get out of there, go home, stay away from everybody. And then we had him sitting back in the in the uh, training room laying down until halftime. And I said, you know, if somebody gets in foul trouble or hurt or something, we're going to put you in uniform because you can't get hurt. It's you got a sore throat and a stomach ache. Um, but hopefully, I mean, this has kind of been going on with us for quite some time. Hopefully we'll get healthy before we head to Vegas. I mean, be able to put Thurman in there, and he gets you six assists, six points, three steals. I mean, he's been so versatile for you guys this year. What was it meant to have him on the team and kind of whatever you need, he can kind of give you? Yeah, I mean, Trey's been great um, because he's just like this unsung piece that every no one ever talks about him, nobody ever mentions him, and people mention six, seven, eight guys, and he's like the guy that no one says a word about, and. You know, until the New Mexico game, and it wasn't him. I mean, it was all of us. It was me, and everybody was atrocious. Um, but you know, we I did make the decision I was going to change the lineup, and obviously, you know, Caleb came to me, and then and then, you know, we did it with Trey as well, and then we started playing pretty decent ball, and we didn't want to go back. But certainly, I got to go back now and decide what we're going to do for for Vegas and look at matchups and who they start, and you know. Because Trey played really good, I thought he really changed the complexion with his ball movement. You happy that you're getting a little a break here, just with some of the sicknesses and, and stuff? Like yeah, that? I mean, me, I'm like, uh, I have player mentality. Like, I don't want to go to practice, so I'm really glad the game's on Tuesday. I'm really glad it's on the road. The staff all thinks I'm crazy. I'm like, this is awesome. We play Tuesday, not Wednesday. It's great that we're on the road and not at home because we get to get together as a team on the road and fly, and it won't seem like we're practicing for five days because, trust me, I'm no different than them. Like, after about an hour and 20 minutes, I want to get out of practice too. Is that as good as you guys can play the way you guys play tonight? I mean, you guys have been winning games, but maybe not playing to your potential, so there's kind of been some you know, poking. You can do this better, this better, this better. It seems like you did everything pretty well tonight. I mean, we can rebound better. You know, certainly at halftime, uh, Thurm and TP and JB, they all had one rebound between them all. And so that was one of the things we talked about. Those guys together, those three guys had three rebounds. And so I, th I think we got to rebound the ball better. That That's the one area that, you know, that we could improve on. It's nice to get Niz going. He had two steals. He was all over the floor. He, I think he wanted to take advantage of his minutes with, you know, as you mentioned before, the bench piece is important. Was it good to get him going? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you, we haven't just haven't had, you know, that many games that were opened up. And, you know, you've got five shots up in nine minutes. So, <laughs> but I thought it was good for J Jordan Brown, for sure. Um, it's good, like, to reward somebody like David Cunningham, even though it was three minutes. I mean, it's when a guy does all the stuff that he does behind closed doors and is part of the scout team and, you know, I mean, he's, he'll remember that three minutes, you know, it's, it's, uh, and he deserves it. You know, you want, you want to get guys out on the floor, um, you know, when they don't get much opportunities. Where's all the players? I think Mike was going to hit them. <laughs> Any more questions for Coach? Oh, I got one. Um, getting your 100th career victory, does this win mean anything to one of you, or is it just another win for you? Yeah, I mean, um, First of all, I'm really old to get 100, so it's, it's, it's 100 in college. Yeah, it's 100 in college, so um, I've won a lot more than that, just in a bunch of different leagues that you guys haven't heard of with a bunch of letters. Um, so it feels good, I guess, just because, you know, it's, I think, you know, my wife's mom's here, so she got to see it, and... Um, you know, my two sons probably think it's pretty cool. But, I, I mean, I told the guys in the – I mean, I don't know why they ruined my clothes by dousing me with water. Um, probably was unnecessary because I think all all the awards that any of us get there, you know, we're in a team sport and it really doesn't, you know, has doesn't really have an impact. But, it, it, you know, it was nice to do it at home. Um, but it's over. Move on. Try to get 101. You reflect a little bit on the last four years and where, where you did with this program, where you've kind of built it to. 
I, I mean, I would like to say yeah, but no, because we just, I mean, we got we got to move on and get ready for UNLV and and um, I not for, <laughs> I don't not for me. I would I, I'd be lying if I told you. I kind of want it over with and get ready to figure out how to beat the running rebels. What has this chapter meant to you, though? I mean, you mentioned calling San Jose State's AD and not hearing back to be able to add this chapter to what you did in the NBA, what you did in the, the E League, and, and what you did uh, internationally. And, and I mean, we just got really good players, you know, and, and um, you know, to to hit something like, you know, that number in a, in sh in a short time, um, you know, we've, we've recruited really, really good players that, that are really good people and practice hard and play hard. And, um, but we're, you know, like whatever, like we got, we got to figure out a way to beat UNLV is what we got to do. But if I reflect back, I mean, it's definitely better coach in front of 11,000 people here in Northern Nevada than it was coaching in Caracas in a gym with no AC. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, you guys. It was it was phenomenal. I mean, playing and watching, you know, when I was, you know, out on the bench, I mean, we were able to force him into turnovers and it felt like we had like 10 straight dunks in which that got everybody going, got us going, got the crowd going, got the bench going. It was it was great. You guys did. I mean, it seemed like you fed off each other emotion wise. I know the crowd's a big part of that. And, but but tonight in particular, uh, Lots of players seem to be very into it. it, it was that a, just a second half thing, or do you guys feed off each other? Can you tell we, us? We How? definitely do. I mean, the, the crazy thing about this team is that, I mean, we were talking the other day in like the locker room, talking about like throwing lobs to each other. You know, if we ever get in like on a fast break, you know, Trey Thurman was like, yeah, man, just run with me, I'm going to throw. So it's like we have a bunch of unselfish guys that, that want to make like, you know, spectacular plays, and they're not trying to make plays just for themselves, you know. How important do you think a win like tonight is going into a big game against UNLV next week? It's great. I mean, because uh, it's great to get it put forth a, a good offensive and defensive game. So, uh, you know, it definitely gives us a little bit of momentum going into the UNLV game. You know, uh, I'm, uh, this is my first year here, so, uh, you know, I'm not new. I mean, I'm new to the rivalry, but from what I've heard, it's pretty big, uh, it's a pretty big rivalry. So getting, that, getting a little bit of momentum going into that game is, is definitely huge for us. Do you feel like you've been playing any differently lately? I think it's three straight games with double figures and you know sort of momentum swing plays. Have you have you had a, you know sort of a different energy lately, or is it just it's turning into a little more production now? I think it's just offensively. I mean, my my teammates are, are starting to just throw the lob a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, I feel like uh, you know they're looking for me a little bit a little bit more. You know, I'm able to you know sometimes be able to keep the. Uh, possession alive by getting you know a second chance and stuff like that. You know, I, I think I'm doing a little bit better offensive rebounding, which uh, helps us, helps the team. You know, Nico got his boards, but he's always going to get his boards. Mm -hmm. he was held to 11 points and all that. Are you, are you? I know it was mostly you and JB. Are you guys pretty satisfied with that? You think? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he's a, I mean, he's a great player. You know, like you said, he rebounds the ball at a very, very high rate. So, I mean, us being able to uh, contain him that was was good. You know, we definitely gave up. I feel like a couple easy, easy ones, and uh, like, that's how the game goes sometimes. I feel like the team needed a game like this. I mean, you guys have been winning games, but you had not been playing to your potential. Mm -hmm. And in this game, you guys showed what you can do when you play to your potential. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, I mean, uh, everybody, I mean, we all believe that, you know, we're a very talented team and that, you know, uh, we can we can do pr some great things. And um, today was, was uh, definitely a... It sh today definitely showed that we were able to do stuff like that, be a, be a spectacular team. You know, hopefully, you know, we don't kind of get starstruck and just kind of stay complacent. You know, hopefully we can um, gain momentum from this and, and, and carry this on through the rest of the season. I mean, you've played at a, three schools now. I mean, what, what is this environment? How is it different than the places you've played at before and, and what kind of coaches built here and the, the support you, know, you guys get from the community? Mm -hmm. uh, 
this is definitely um, the crowd is is definitely the fans are, are, are remarkable here. Um, I mean, at my first school, you know, they didn't, you know, we didn't we didn't win so much, so so the, we didn't have too many people in the stands. My second school, you know, we definitely, you know, we had people in the stands. Our, our fans were good, but but here, you know, it's kind of, you see a little bit more passion, you know, in our team. And I, I think that comes with us being the the tradition or tradition that uh, Coach Musselman has built, and. Um, so you know they're they're excited to come watch us play, and they're, which is great. You and Jordan Brown had a uh, 21 minutes each in today's game. What have you done to kind of you know, elevate his game? You know, fifth year guy versus a, a freshman. I try I try to talk to him because you know some some games you know he he doesn't play as much as he want, and you know I just try to I just try to encourage him. You're like you're like he's he's a he's a great great player, very very skilled, and you know I just try to tell him that you know just keep your head. You know, you will get your time. Like. Just because it's not happening, you know, when you want it, but it, it will happen. And for those of us that can't dunk, what does it feel like to just you know, put one down on somebody in that second half there? I mean, it's great. I mean, that's <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Any more questions for Trey? Thanks. Uh, feels great just because like we've been trying so hard we've been working so hard in practice trying to figure this stuff out you know Mus has been watching a million clips you know calling people he knows assistant coaches have been doing so much work it's just you know put us in great positions and just help us because uh, we've been struggling offensively so it just felt great for us to and, it, and we've been putting, and we talked about it in practice uh, not in, uh, a couple of days before in practice and even the, uh, yesterday just about how we can be more efficient on offense and what we do when we are efficient on offense. And I think we worked on that and uh, we executed that today in this game from, you know, about 37 minutes of the game. I mean, that like the offense we saw like the first six, seven games. I guess what was the difference? Why were you guys so much more efficient? Uh, I think, like I said, the planning and uh, just how much they've been trying to nail like concepts into our head about stuff. And, um, you know, a couple of guys did some great shots too. You know, you're going to have that when you have, when you're having a night like, uh, like that. And, um, like I said, we just we have a formula, and I think the formula we, uh, guys starting to buy into the formula that we have now, and we got to just keep that formula, and understand what it is, and what uh, makes our offense click. I can't tell you guys the formula. <laughs> is, it, is it just passing the ball a little bit more, getting it inside? It seems like. Um, you know, chemical X. I can't really. <laughs> I can't. I, I, I don't. You know, it's it's a it's a good formula, though, and everybody on the team knows understands what it is. So I think if we just keep doing that, and we just you know, part of it's moving the ball, but part of it's, you know, just trusting yourself, trusting your teammates, having fun. That's part of it too. But can't give all the secrets away. It's part of it having Caleb hit all this through. <laughs> That's part of it too. That's part of it too, definitely. You feel like you guys needed a game like this? Like you said, you guys have been winning, you've been yeah. grinding, you've been doing some good things, but maybe not playing to the right. potential we know that you have. Uh, that I I think it was just good. For, it's a confidence boot, uh, builder. And, uh, you know, some guys have been having great nights and some guys have been having off nights. And then the next game, another guy would have a great night and another guy would have an off night. And we were just – guys were, were feeling real inconsistent. And um, I think a lot of guys were hard on themselves too, I mean, including me, including other guys in the locker room. I think, you know, this is just a night where, like I said, I think we understand something. Like, I think today under showed us something. And if we watch when – when we watch film tomorrow, um, I'm pretty sure – the uh, formula that we found out is going gonna, gonna to match up again with what we thought, and it's going to show us, you know, that's how we're going to be good on offense. And I think I think we'll be good, and we'll be even better when some guys still, you know, just, are, just they're, they're, they're going hard, they're trying so hard, and you know, we still got even even more room to grow. But this is a great night for us, definitely. You know, you guys have you know just a ton of highlights actually on both ends, but I look at and I see 21 assists and seven turnovers, and mm -hmm. kind of a behind the scenes thing. I mean, that's just got to be huge for yeah. you guys—the efficiency and all that. Yeah, definitely. Coach Musk talks every day about how we uh, how we have to keep our turnovers low. You know, and uh, Cody's been doing a great job of just facilitating facilitating and passing the ball and keeping guys involved. And um, you know, that's a thing we have to, we uh, we build on. Like we cannot have turnover the ball. We got to keep teams um, at bay with that, and we got to get as, get up as many shots as possible. You can't score if you don't shoot. And sometimes you got to take a bad shot over a turnover because a bad shot can, come, can go in and turnover can't. 
And, um, you know, not like that. It just shows, you know, we're moving the ball. We're, we're being confident in ourselves and our games. And, and guys are cutting and getting open. And uh, we're pushing. Transition is one reason why that's the turnovers are so low and the assists are so high. Transition. We were great on transition tonight. You guys have a little break. You think it's a well-timed break? I know some guys on the team are sick and going hard for, for a pretty good long time. Um, it might be a break on the schedule, but, you know, we're approaching it just like we have a game on Saturday, you know. Um, but definitely not having a game on Saturday is just going to help guys with the injuries, little knickknacks, you know, st stuff like that. And like you said, some guys were feeling under the weather. And, uh, but we have to kind of stay in the game mode because sometimes stuff like this hurts teams. And uh, I understand that we're a veteran team, but, you know, it just hurts teams. Sometimes when you have that break that you don't usually have all the time. So we got to stay into it. And we'll, uh, Coach Muss and staff will do probably a great job of keeping us warmed up. Are you at UNLV next? You haven't played against them, but you've seen the rivalry up close. Right. Guess, uh, what would you learn about the UNLV rivalry uh, just sitting out last year? I just can't wait. That's really that's. I just can't wait. I understand it's probably gonna be a, it's gonna be a sold out gym there, you know. And um, this is um, we we. I just can't wait. That's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> They're gonna the juice is gonna be pumping and um, just like every other team that plays us, but it's gonna be a little extra just because you know we're both in the same state and it's red and blue. On a, a, a personal level, you got back into the lineup minutes away up and all that. Is, is it hard to sit out at you know the level you play at and all that, or was it a relief to get back in tonight? Could you tell us about that? Um, I just tried to do my job and just stay consistent. Um, uh, I don't know if it was a relief. It was just like a you know, a, a step up thing. I just got to be you, you got to be ready, and it's, it's gonna be somebody's night. And it's, it's, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you're gonna play a lot of minutes. Sometimes you're not. We have a, a great team. Like you know, it's hard to play for teams like this sometimes. And sometimes it's easy, but, you know, and guys have to put the ego aside and stuff like that. And, you know, it was just – I just tried to come out and just be ready. You know, sometimes you got to be ready. And I, and I thought I did a pretty good job of just being ready and just trying to, you know, do my do my job. I'm not trying to come out there and do too much because whatever happened in the past. Like, you got to be ready for the, your night. You never know when it's going to be your night or when it's going to be your time. Or a guy – you just never know what's going to happen. Like, I try to just stay into it mentally. And my teammates did a great job of keeping it – keep me in it uh, mentally as well. So, um, and I thank them so much for that, you know. More questions for Trayshawn? Thank you. How good does it feel to have the kind of game you guys had tonight? Um. It feels really good. It's you know we've been feeling like we've been needing a game like this for a long time, and we know we are capable of playing a game like this against a, a talented team. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, like Coach said, that's that's just what can happen when we put two halves together. Whenever we put 40, a full forty minutes together, we can do you know do stuff like that. You know, way more often than we are now. Do you think tonight might be that breakthrough game that you guys might have been waiting for to all work on all cylinders together? I hope so. I mean, I hope so. Like for us seeing that firsthand and seeing how we're playing and and seeing how fun it's been, you know, playing the full forty minutes. I mean, I'd hope I'd hope for everybody on the team that's what that's what we'd want to uh, shoot for every game. So just seeing what we're capable of, I hope I hope that kind of you know triggers us in a, in, in a way that we we'll, can continue to get back to that pretty much every game. You guys had a good second half in the last game too. You scored forty seven. Did that twenty point first half just kind of? wake everybody up and say, this has got to stop. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that we just knew we're a much better, you know, team than 20 points at a half. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's one of those things where, it's just, you know, you kind of look at yourself like, and this, you know, it's kind of ridiculous, you know. Um, you know, we obviously, you know, looking at it, you want to up the energy up and, you know, figure out a way to get guys going and stuff like that. And, you know, I – and like I said before, I just I feel like stuff like this can happen whenever guys get going because, you know, whenever, you know, my shots are starting to fall a little bit, I, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a domino effect. Uh, you know, not just only me, but then when JC's shots are falling and uh, you got TP dunking on people and, you know, just having a, a lot of momentum changes for us. And, uh, you know, I think that gave us a, a big push. And, you know, I think we, we saw each other get going and it, it just trickles down. I always talk about hitting is contagious. Is it the same in basketball when some guys start hitting shots or everybody starts hitting shots? Oh, yeah. You want to match everybody's energy. Like, if I see Jazz hit a shot, I want to match his energy. Like, when next time I take a shot, I want to make sure I make it. Uh, especially if guys are making it, 
uh, consecutively, you don't want to be that guy to break the, you know, to break the streak or whatever. So, uh, you know, or if we miss one, you want to make sure you make the next one. So uh, it's definitely contagious. Uh, it's definitely contagious. So just seeing the shots fall kind of gives you confidence, even if you weren't the one to shoot it, to let, to see it go in, regardless if you're a shooter, if whether you shoot it or not, just to see the ball go in is uh, is, is is big for anybody. Coach kind of alluded to you guys maybe taking less threes last game, and then he said you guys were kind of. Uh, I came into him a little bit on the court as you guys kept draining them tonight. Yeah. But was that in your guys' mind tonight that much, going into the game and during the game? Uh, I mean, we were just playing. Like, you know, we were just having fun. We wanted to put on, you know, kind of put on a show and and just play really hard for these people, you know, who's who's been affected, you know, by cancer or, who you know, who's been diagnosed. And, you know, we we put the names on our shoes and stuff like that and, and to honor people and their families and their friends. And uh, I think it was only right that we – play that hard for them and then when we play that hard and, and, and shots are falling and we're playing defense and, and you can we can have an outcome like that so um, the fans were amazing they they gave us a, a huge boost like they do every single game so um, you know they deserve they deserve a game like that oh it feels good you know obviously I mean it's always gonna feel good to, to shoot like that and uh, I mean we knew we had we know we have it in us we know we have it in us to shoot like that and uh, once you miss so much and you're and, and, and you're clanking them off the side of uh, you know of the rim and stuff like that, at some point it's inevitable for the ball to go in. So just tonight was our night for it to go in, and hopefully this you know can turn a new leaf and hopefully it can stay like that. There was a time in the second half you got a steal, you could have taken it in yourself. You tried to throw it up to Trey, mm -hmm. and he got fouled. How badly did you want him to convert that? And did any of the coaches say, "Have you, have you take that in yourself next time"? Uh, yeah, they kind of, you know, they kind of gave me the look like, "Ah, just finish it." But you know, I didn't care. Like, you know, it's one of those things where you just stuff like that. You know, when you're up at least that much at the time, you want to do stuff for the crowd. You want to get the crowd going. You want to get. I saw TP behind me. He kind of messed it up for himself. Because I saw him in the corner of my eye. I was going to throw it up anyways. I, I threw it off the backboard to Cody like a hundred times, in, you know, in high school. So I seen him in the, and seen him in my vision. But obviously, me and him had never played together like that or had an opportunity like that. So I see him back there, and he's looking. He's like this. And I'm like, dude, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to do that if you want the lob. I'm gonna give you the lob, but you know, if, if you're running on defense and you look back and you see somebody doing this, you're gonna make sure he doesn't get the lob. So uh, he got he got to work on being a little bit more sneakier if he wants the lob. You gotta take some tips from Co me and Cody, uh, but no, nah, I just wanted to, you know, just do something, do something fun. It didn't work out, but he hit two free throws, so whatever. How important is this moment of going into UNLV? Two uh, it's huge. I mean, they're they're a really talented team. They're really athletic. You know, uh, they got a couple players who, who's, uh, you know, have improved a lot from last year. Uh, it's always, you know, always good to have, you know, be feeling like this walking into a rivalry game. So. Um, we definitely want to use this momentum and uh, and go and go towards there in a hostile environment and make sure we try to perform the same way. Who came up with the idea to ask on social media for initials of, of family members or people to honor? Uh, well, I mean, at first it was uh, well, I you know I had my uh, my girlfriend. She uh, she has a nephew or whatever you know a nephew who's uh, who's going to recovery. He just finished chemo and stuff, so. He's uh he's recovering from that, and then uh, I told her I'd put it, I put his name in my shoe, and I was like, well, you know, it's a pink out, and obviously people are gonna be here in honor of that too, and I was like, so then I I just thought about that, and then I asked Trey and Cody, and we all got together, and we were like, you know, let's let's tweet something out, and you know, put some more names on our shoes and stuff like that, and just kind of see what response we got. So we got a lot of people, you know, that wanted to be involved in that. I thought that was pretty cool, and you know. Uh, just doing little stuff like that, you don't know how much it affects people like that and how much it means to them. And, you know, I, I think it's pretty cool for, you know, that they allowed us to honor them and their loved ones, whether they, they passed away or they're just affected by it now or whether they survived and stuff like that. So I thought it was cool f for them to, to allow us to be able to, you know, play in honor f of that. Sean hadn't been getting a ton of minutes, but then he steps into the starting lineup again and is mm -hmm. very productive. I guess what, what has he meant to this team um, and, and his unselfishness? I mean, it doesn't seem like there's any resentment for not playing a lot of minutes. Some guys might like hide that, but it seems like with him, it's genuine. Man, he's the definition of a you know a, a, of a winner. You know, like he's the uh, the ultimate person that you want on, on any team because uh, you know, like you said, he's really unselfish. Doesn't care who gets the credit. Doesn't care who's playing well. He's hard on himself to play, to play well. If he doesn't start, he's not. 
you know, he's not, you know, whatever and, you know, have an attitude or, you know, bring a negative energy to the locker room. He's, you know, he's always staying ready. So, you know, he's, you know, he's one of those guys that's like, he's one of those uh, ultimate role playing guys like in the league who just stays ready no matter his minutes, whether he starts, whether he doesn't play, whether he doesn't dress out, he's always going to be ready and he's going to come in and try to, you know, perform to the best of his ability and do whatever he's got to do, whether it's score or play or defend or, or sit the bench for us to win. So, you know, he's the, you know, the ultimate teammate for us. Game evolve uh, in the sit-out season when you got to watch him because it seemed like you played at Omaha quite differently than he plays here. Mm-hmm. I mean, that goes with him, you know, being a teammate like that. It's just uh, he he just adjusts and gels to whatever team you have, you know. And this and obviously in this team, or there's going to be times like when we played UMass where he, we need him to score and he has almost 20 in the first half, and then you can have other games where we just need him to defend and not take a shot and uh that's the beauty of him is that he can play he's very versatile he can play either way if you need him to go score you can, he can go score if you need to you know need him to put on one of the best players you can put on the best players whether it's big or small uh you need him to go get a big rebound he you know he plays really hard and <coughs> and he's always listening so he's just trying to learn and he's just the ultimate glue guy reveal the secrets to your guys's offense but yeah. when you guys are playing good offense what what is the difference in a game like tonight versus what we've seen for the large part of the last 10 games? Uh, I think the biggest thing for us was is just playing without thinking, just playing free and, you know, uh, not second, you know, not second guessing anything. When you shoot it, you shoot it. Like, you know, uh, if you drive it, drive it to the whole hard. And, you know, just knowing that nobody's going to be mad at you for, for either making a mistake, missing a shot, uh, taking a tough shot, um, you know, and just playing for each other. I mean, the biggest thing is, is I think, is just that we just let it, we just let it fly today. You know, and we were just playing with a lot of energy and stuff. Or, you know, playing with a lot of energy and, you know, getting to play in a pink out and having a crowd like that. So just playing hard and, you know, just playing free basically. You guys throw water on coach in the locker room? Yeah, we did. We got him. Uh, we got everybody had a lot of cups, so it was equivalent to a, a like probably half a Gatorade. What do you think of the pink uniforms this year compared to last year? That, yeah, a little bit. It's like a little bit lighter and stuff like that. But I like it, and it's gonna look good. I mean, I've already seen some pictures from people from on TV, so it looks good on TV. So I can't complain.